In this tutorial, we're going to explore process recipes. These are an easy way to export your photos and speed up your workflow. I'll create three process recipes, one for exporting photos to Instagram, another for online use, and finally one for print. Let's get started. We can find the process recipes in the output tool tab here. You can see that Capture One has created some ready-made recipes to help get us started. So if I select a recipe, I can see the export settings in the process recipe tool below. I can turn on a recipe by checking the checkbox and I can select multiple recipes to process at the same time. Let's create our first recipe. I'll press the plus icon and rename this Instagram. Now let's add the export settings in the process recipe tool below. In the basic tab, we have lots of options for exporting our photos. In format, we can change the file type. So Instagram supports JPEG, so let's select this option. And let's leave the quality setting at 100 because Instagram will compress my photos anyway. Next, we have ICC profile, where we can choose which color profile to embed into the processed photos. As our recipe is for online use, I'll select sRGB as this ensures we get accurate colors online. Next, we have resolution, but because our recipe is for online use, I'll be defining the image size in pixels, not with resolution. So let's do this in the scale dropdown. Instagram only shows my photos at 1080 pixels wide. So let's select width in the dropdown and then pixels and add in 1080. Now let's go to our file tab where we can set the export destination. So by default, the root folder defers to the output location tool below. This means my photos will export to the output folder inside my session, or if I was using a catalog, it would be the pictures folder on my computer. We can also check the export destination by selecting one of the arrow icons. We have two more options inside the root folder. Image folder will export to the same folder as the originals, or I can select a new folder. So I'd like my photos to be exported to my Dropbox folder. Then I can use the Dropbox app to download directly to my mobile and upload to Instagram from there. Now we can see Dropbox is my new root folder. If I'd like to add a subfolder, I can just add a name here. So let's call this Instagram photos. Okay, so the next tab along is called Adjustments. In here, we can add output sharpening. By default, no output sharpening is applied. So this means only the sharpening that was added in our details tab will be added on export. However, when we scale a photo, it does have a negative effect on the sharpness. So we'd always recommend adding sharpening for your intended output. As these photos will be viewed online, let's select output sharpening for screen. So how do we know how much sharpening to apply? Well, we can use Capture One's recipe proofing, which will rescale our photo to match the output settings. First, let's go up to the toolbar and view the photo at 100%. Now I'll turn on my recipe proofing and Capture One will rescale my photo to match the output settings. Now I can see exactly how much sharpening to apply. So I'm happy with this. I'll go back up to my toolbar and turn off my recipe proofing and zoom back out. Okay, so now my process recipe is ready to go. I'll go down to the browser and select a few more photos to process. And I'll ensure I have the edit all selected variants icon enabled in the toolbar, which means all my photos will be processed and make sure my recipe is checked in the process recipes tool. And I can either begin processing using the keyboard shortcut command or control D, or I can press the process button in the process recipes tool. Let's select the arrow icon to see the processed photos. And there they are ready to upload to Instagram. Okay, so now let's create a second process recipe to export photos for my portfolio website. Let's go to the plus icon to add a new recipe. I'll rename this portfolio website JPEGs. 
In the basic tab, let's change the file format to JPEG because this recipe is for online use. This time I will want to lower the quality because I want to make sure my photos load quickly on my website. But first I need to assess the level of JPEG compression that will be applied. Let's turn on our recipe proofing and zoom to 100%. Now I can lower the slider until I'm happy with the level of compression. This works for me, so I'll turn off my recipe proofing and zoom back out. Now let's go down to the ICC profile. As this recipe is for online use, again let's select sRGB to get accurate colours online. Just like with the last recipe, I'll ignore resolution and my website recommends photos no bigger than 2500 pixels, so I'll select long edge in the scale drop down and add 2500 pixels. In the file tab, I'll leave the root folder at the default setting of exporting to my output folder, but instead of adding in a subfolder name myself, I'd like Capture One to create subfolders for me automatically. If we take a look in the library tool tab and down to our filters tool, you can see some of my photos have star ratings. Well, I'd like Capture One to create subfolders based on the star ratings. This is where we can use Capture One tokens to create text dynamically from metadata or other data within the session or catalog. Let's go back to the file tab and here we have a sub menu icon. I'll select this and a dialog window will open. Here we can see all of the tokens I can choose from. I can either double click a token to add this or if I know the name, I can start typing and capture one will auto fill. Now let's press OK and we can see the token has been added into the subfolder field. I won't make any changes to the adjustments, metadata or watermark tabs, but you can change these according to your needs. Now my process recipe is ready to go. I'll select everything by using the keyboard shortcut command or control A. Now let's process the photos by pressing Command or Control D. Let's select the arrow icon. And there we can see Capture One is creating subfolders based on the star ratings. If I'd like to stop processing the photos, I can go to the Batch Process tab here. And at the bottom, there is a Stop button. To clear the queue, I'll select a photo and press Command or Control A to select everything and then backspace to delete. Make sure you turn the queue back on as well. OK, now we have two process recipes for online use. Let's create a third one for print. I'd like to export my photos as A5 postcards. Let's go down to the plus icon to add a new recipe and I'll rename this A5 Print Postcards. Now let's add the export settings in the Process Recipe tool. In the Format drop-down, we can leave this set to TIFF, as this is one of the preferred file formats for printing. JPEG is another option, but speak to your print provider to see what they require. I can also leave the ICC profile set to Adobe RGB because this colour profile contains more colour information so it's a better choice for printing. Next we have resolution which is important for printing. A general guide is that if your print will be handheld like a postcard or brochure then a PPI of 300 should be used. But if your print is viewed further away, like a poster or billboard, you can have less detail so a lower PPI can be used. Moving down to scale, let's add the A5 measurements. So I'll select dimensions in the drop down and then millimeters and add in 148 by 210. Now let's go up to the file tab. I'm happy with the default setting of exporting to my output folder, but let's add a subfolder name. OK, so let's go to our Adjustments tab so we can add some output sharpening. In the drop down, this time I'll select Output Sharpening for Print, and you'll see a new parameter appears called Distance. This is referring to the viewing distance. So my postcard will be handheld, so the viewing distance would be around 40 centimeters. 
Let's turn on recipe proofing so we can decide how much sharpening to apply. The default setting is a great starting point, but you can increase or decrease to your taste. So I'm happy with this. Let's turn off recipe proofing and zoom back out. Finally, let's go to the watermark tab. And in the drop down, I'll select image as I'd like to add my logo as a watermark. I can either add this using the upload box or I can use the submenu icon to locate the file on my computer. Here is my logo with the transparent background. I'll press enter to add this. And now we can use the sliders to change the design. I can change the opacity or the scale. And I can either change the position with these sliders or with the watermark hand cursor tool here. So now let's check the photo is cropped to the A5 measurements. I'll go up to the toolbar and select my crop tool. And if I hold down on the icon, I can see a list of different aspect ratios to choose from. Let's select output as this uses the dimensions in the process recipe. Now when I crop, I'm using the A5 measurements. If I want to see how the crop is looking, I can simply select a different cursor tool. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut V, which is my select tool. Now my process recipe is ready to go. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control D to begin processing. So let's click the arrow icon. And there is my folder ready to send to the printer. As you can see, process recipes are an incredibly powerful tool for exporting your photos and speeding up your workflow.